In this project, you will teach to learn by creating stock footage that can be used in a wide range of digital projects. Ancient philosophers and modern educators have long known that one of the best ways to learn something is to teach it to someone else. Research into this protege effect has shown that when we're asked to explain what we've learned rather than simply memorizing, recognizing, or repeating it, we work harder to understand the material, recall it more accurately, and apply it more effectively. Additional research into teachable agents has demonstrated that students are highly motivated when playing the role of teacher, even when that role is played virtually rather than in person. This teaching in the context of learning also provides a comparably safe opportunity for students to identify confusions and gaps in their own knowledge and skills, and to receive the kind of feedback that further enhances their learning. In this project, you will teach to learn by creating stock footage that can be used in a wide range of digital projects. The goal is to create short, compelling videos that showcase principles of visual perception and then describe those principles to others. By connecting visual imagery and psychological principles, you will have the chance to solidify new content knowledge while using that knowledge in a way that offers deeper learning. The following examples provide you with some ideas and inspiration. Video is everywhere, and making videos is easier than it's ever been thanks to digital image technology, smartphones, expanded computer memory, and nearly limitless storage options. Free stock footage that can be used across video projects is also rapidly expanding, and at the center of it all is visual perception, our organization, identification, and interpretation of visual information. Graphic designers, photographers, and videographers regularly use the cues, colors, and organizational principles of visual perception to evoke different experiences or to make their work more appealing. Here are some stock footage examples that use a few of these perceptual tools. Faces are particularly salient stimuli in human perception. In fact, infants as young as newborns prefer faces and face-like stimuli. Even in complex scenes, full faces rather than partial faces or profiles are attended to more. Given this preference for faces, footage that excludes faces can be a compelling way to direct attention to the most important action of a scene. Or, if you want attention to be directed to a specific part of a face, it might be helpful to use this type of shot. Cues related to color can also influence perception. Our eyes are more sensitive to some colors, and these colors attract greater attention. Red, in particular, is often used to grab attention. Saturation of colors also increases attention, so bright red attracts more attention than a dark red. White can also be attractive, though bright colors will often draw more attention, and so white mixed with a bright color can be particularly striking. We are also attracted by large areas of a single color, especially the brighter colors like red, orange, or yellow, and to a slightly lesser degree, to purple, green, or blue. Using color theory, we can also create compelling footage. A monochrome shot, for example, captures only one color or hue, usually with varied saturation and values. Footage presenting an analogous color scheme uses colors that are next to each other on the color wheel, like reds and oranges, or cooler colors like blues and greens. Complementary colors are opposite each other on the wheel, for example, blue and orange. Analogous color images can also be striking. Neutral colors like black, white, and gray can help you balance the scene, so when you do use color, it really stands out. Monocular depth cues are also used to create effective and compelling footage. Here's an example of occlusion, showing a boy who's obviously behind the menorah because the candles are blocking our view of him. And here, the flowers occlude or block our view of the cars and the building behind them, but are also occluded by the pedestrians passing in front. These depth cues allow us to perceive what is closer and what is further away, despite only having a two-dimensional image. Also, we can determine which flowers are closest to us and which are further away, based on their relative size. Relative height gives us the impression that objects that appear higher in the scene are further away than the objects that appear lower. Notice that the puddle and the skateboarder are lower on the screen and appear much closer than the building which is higher. You can see a texture gradient cue in this footage. The further away the leaves are on the ground, the smaller the visual angles appear. This compared to the leaves that are closer to the camera, which is made up of larger shapes. These shapes get progressively smaller, showing the distance captured by the video footage. Here you can see the texture gradient within a field of poppies. Linear perspective makes parallel lines seem to converge as they move into the distance. 
We perceive this not as a hallway narrowing, but as the end of the hallway that is visible being further off in the distance. Here are a few more examples. Aerial perspective is the effect the atmosphere has on the appearance of objects when they're viewed from a distance. Typically, they become hazier and bluer. Because photographers and videographers can sometimes control the sharpness of objects relative to their background, various blurring effects are often used to create more compelling images. A really nice example of this is the effect called bokeh, an aesthetic that produces out-of-focus parts of the image, making the object of interest more prominent. At the same time, it allows the background to recede. Rather than needing to control the lens aperture on your camera, bokeh can also be achieved with special smartphone filters. Beyond depth cues, perceptual constancy is also used by those viewing video footage. For example, size constancy allows us to perceive an object as having a constant size even though our sensation of the object changes. In this scene, the two men look smaller and smaller as they run toward the end of the dock. This change in size tells us that they're moving further away, and not that their actual size is changing. Here, the runner is getting closer, not growing larger. Similarly, shape constancy allows us to perceive an object as having a constant shape, even though the information we're taking in through our eyes is changing. Here, we see the woman from different angles, but perceive her shape as constant. The gestalt principles of perceptual organization are also used extensively in both still and moving images. According to the law of similarity, we tend to group figures that resemble each other. Here, we tend to group these cookies into moon rows and star rows rather than just a sheet of cookies. Using the principle of similarity in our video footage can help us organize a scene while also making it more visually interesting. Because there are so many similar looking books in this image, the composition of the footage is both easy and interesting to look at. Similarity is all about patterns, so looking for resemblance in shape size, motion, and color can help create harmonious footage. In this footage, the similar color and pattern of the trees make a beautiful image. But tweaking similarity just a bit can make for even more interesting images that attract greater attention. Here, the identical twin girls are wearing and holding the same hats and skateboards, but in different colors. In this footage, the couple is wearing the same clothes but have a different skin tone. Here again, similarity in the context of small differences makes for a more beautiful and compelling image. Keeping all the features the same except one is a great way to attract attention to your footage. The law of proximity is all about distance. The closer your subjects are to one another, the easier it will be to think of them as one whole object. You can place two subjects together to create a sense of warmth. To create the opposite feeling, you can create distance between your subjects. The Gestalt Theory's Law of Continuity is ideal for landscape and architecture images that you want to add depth to. Continuity focuses exclusively on lines, especially parallel ones. If the lines reach the end of your frame, the mind will assume that they continue on beyond it. In this way, you can use lines to create a sense of harmony and continuity. The Law of Closure allows us to perceive a complete image in the absence of complete information. Here, we perceive a fountain despite the blurred visual. And in the context of stop motion images, we can perceive the traffic pattern despite seeing only a subset of the frames. There's also so much that can be done to change the perceptual experience of your images when you play with light and shadow or with figure and ground, so give it a try and see what additional strategies you can uncover. Good luck.